Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video and in this video we're going to discuss the fetal circulation. So what we're going to be looking at is generalized fetal circulation, looking at your umbilical vessels and the fetal shunts. Uh, it's kind of a, a focus of this video. But as we go into this, what I want you guys to do is if you could is to start off by drawing these basic shapes that I have here now. And our goal is to kind of add to these drawings. And what we want to do on the first one is with the heart, uh, we're going to go ahead and partially complete uh, cardiac septation here, but only for uh, portions of the heart. And we want to go ahead and label the heart here, um, the uh, uh, right atrium. the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. Okay, so with that labeled, then let's go over here to the two ovals on both sides, and uh, we're just going to write in lung on each one of those. These will rep reference a lung. And then here we want to reference the liver. And the reason I went ahead and pre-drew it is it's just easier for me to do it that way. And then down here we want to write in the placenta. And I'm going to need to make this a little smaller. So the placenta and the umbilical cord. Now that we have the anatomy labeled, now what we want to be able to do is just come into here with the placenta and discuss some physiology. Now the thing that I want to mention is the placenta is the only location of any type of uh, any kind of uh, transfer between fetal and maternal blood. So what we want to do is just use a couple little squiggle lines to reference the uh, the blood vessels that women find in placenta, uh, both uh, venous or deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood. And what we want to be able to do is to start off by kind of referencing that we are going to begin with some blood here uh, that is actually going to be very oxygenated. So I'm just going to write high O2 concentration, oxygenated blood. And that oxygenated blood is going to leave the placenta and it is going to make it for the liver, but instead of really entering the liver, we're going to shunt that blood away, and then we are going to take that blood and unite that blood here with the inferior vena cava, abbreviated IVC. Now, the vessel that was leaving and in the umbilical cord and coming out in red here, well, that is a vein because it is going to be going towards the fetal heart. So this is in the umbilical cord, so it is an umbilical vein. And the umbilical vein is oxygen-rich, nutrient-rich blood, and it is going to the liver where I hit a dot and drew a shunt. And the fetal shunt that we're seeing right here, this shunt, is the ductus. Now, since this is a vein, the gnosis. You should note that the veins in the fetal circulation here, at least those of the umbilical circulation, are oxygenated. Now when this blood reaches and shunts from the liver, it ultimately goes into the inferior vena cava, mixing deoxygenated blood uh, that we find here. So the blue is referencing that this is uh, low O2 blood, deoxygenated blood. But this blood then mixes. And what I'm going to do is find a nice little purple color. Um, find one that I like here. Let's uh, have to use that one. Um, and I am going to reference this purple color here, this lavender, to be mixed blood being a mixture of deoxygenated and oxygenated blood. Now, we're still going to be the inferior vena cava, and the inferior vena cava still arrives to the right atrium. And in this case, we are going to take from the superior vena cava 
SVC is still going to bring the deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. Now, when this blood that is mixed blood, and from here on out, I'm just going to be treating this as a mixed blood, this mixed blood that's in the right atrium has two possibilities that it can go. Now, if you're familiar with normal circulation, then you should be familiar with what's going to happen. In normal circulation, this blood passes through the tricuspid valve into right ventricle. So that is one of the options. Now, the second option here is we have a shunt, a fetal shunt, located here that is in the interatrial septum called the foramen ovale. Now, the foramen ovale uh, closes up after birth, after a while, and it closes up. But this is a left-right shunt that allows blood to pass into the left atrium to shunt blood away from lungs. Now let's talk about that a little bit because I'm actually going to take our first option to go into the right ventricle and follow it to its logical conclusion. So if you're not familiar with normal circulation, definitely go out and review that before you really get into this too much. Now, as we notice, we have this blood that is mixed... O2 blood, excuse me, got a hiccup, and we're going to leave our right ventricle. Now, right ventricle, remember, takes blood to lungs. Now, I am going to do that on both sides here just because. Now, the lungs in the fetus are not really going to be oxygenating at all uh, because they're not functioning. You're not breathing. So when this blood arrives back through pulmonary veins, back to our left atrium, this mixed blood then will go into the left ventricle and out the aorta. Now, with that, there is a very fascinating thing that happens. There is a shunt with the pulmonary arteries here, and I'm just going to draw this shunt like this, this shunt shunts some of the blood that leaves the right ventricles to the lungs. It is um, called the ductus. Sorry, I'm having trouble writing with my app here. Let me erase that. It's uh, the app I use to make the videos sometimes has some problems. The ductus arteriosus. And the ductus arteriosus shunts blood from the lungs as just as the foramen ovale did, just a different way. It's between the aorta and the pulmonary arteries. Um, and let's just label pulmonary arteries here, pulmonary artery here, so we have that. Now, what's going to happen is basically after the blood that is in the uh, aorta, as it goes out, it will continue on become incredibly deoxygenated blood, and it will bifurcate, and off that bifurcation, you will get your two, count them, two umbilical arteries that carry blood uh, that is low O2. So we want to label those as well as the umbilical arteries that are carrying deoxygenated blood out of the aorta, this uh, blood as it comes off. Now these will later become the lateral bladder ligaments uh, and are still there on your bladder in the adult. There are two of those, two umbilical arteries, one umbilical vein, and the umbilical vein, its ductus venosus shunt, is what becomes ligamentum teres of the liver in the adult. And then the remnant, the foramen ovale, normally closes down. Now, when the foramen ovale doesn't close down, we call that a patent foramen ovale. And also, it is common to have a patent ductus arteriosus. Now, after birth, the ductus arteriosus closes down, becomes a ligamentum arteriosum, and you will find that 
associated to your pulmonary arteries and aorta on the adult heart and the heart after birth. So this really shows you guys, hopefully, a good, clear understanding, a simple explanation of why the blood is the way it is during the fetus and fetal circulation, because the fetus does not really need to do much, uh, doesn't need to breathe and do much liver metabolism because mother is doing all that for it. So this concludes my video on fetal circulation. I hope you find it useful. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you like to see in future videos. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.